The years after the Second World War were good years for the hunting and shooting sports industry. A growing middle class with vacation time and a car in every driveway dramatically increased the pool of Americans who could now enjoy time afield. And wildlife management programs had helped rebuild the populations of many popular game species, enabling sportsmen from coast to coast to enjoy quality hunting experiences. Economic growth in the post-war years, however, also accelerated trends that created new challenges for our industry. As America's cities grew, new attitudes began to have an impact on many long-standing American traditions. The anti-hunting movement, for example, gained momentum in the mid-50s based on a new thesis of animal rights. Attitudes towards firearms were also increasingly viewed through an urban lens that associated guns more with violent crime than with time-honored outdoor traditions. In response to these new trends, Field and Stream magazine hosted the first national conference on the shooting sports in 1960. From this industry gathering, a recommendation was made the following year to start a new industry organization, the National Shooting Sports Foundation. So join me as we stroll through the first 50 years of NSSF's history. It's a story of the challenges our industry has faced and the achievements our industry association has made over the past half century. Chartered in 1961 with 30 founding members, NSSF's original mission statement was to create a better public understanding of and a more active participation in the shooting sports. NSSF moved quickly to tell the story of the hunter's role in conservation and bring out the facts about the safe and responsible use of firearms in print, radio, and television. Spokesmen such as Robert Stagg, Bing Crosby, Roy Rogers, and Slim Pickens helped the foundation to reach out to the non-hunting public. Safety was always a key message, and NSSF led the effort to promote the use of hunter orange clothing and strengthen hunter education requirements. The foundation achieved prominence on the national scene in 1972 with the promotion of National Hunting and Fishing Day. President Nixon signed the first presidential proclamation of NHF Day. And throughout the country, over 3,000 open house events were staged by clubs and sportsmen's organizations. Today, NHF Day continues as one of the most effective grassroots efforts ever undertaken to promote traditional outdoor sports and conservation. In the early 80s, the foundation launched its first national campaign to foster good sportsmanship with the support of our media and publishing members. As the NSSF grew, so did the need for added revenue to expand its efforts on behalf of industry. To meet that need, the SHOT Show was launched in 1979 in St. Louis, with 290 exhibitors encompassing some 50,000 square feet. One of the great success stories in trade show history, SHOT now attracts some 1,600 exhibitors, taking up 650,000 square feet. The SHOT Show became our industry's showcase event one that allowed many of our ranks to grow their businesses and enabled all of us to stand proudly together. Added funding from the show helped NSSF launch major new efforts, including educational programs for schools that have brought the story of wildlife management to millions of students, and shooting promotions that have encouraged millions of Boy Scouts to take their first shots. By the early 80s, 
NSSF recognized that there was a need to stimulate new and added participation in hunting and the shooting sports. Among the Foundation's first efforts was to import a popular European game of sporting clays. Calling it Hunter's Clays, NSSF launched a national campaign to promote this new clay target sport, including the first nationally televised program on the game, featuring Grits Gresham and Bob Brister. While the name Hunter's Clays never caught on, the sport certainly did. To help sportsmen find a place to shoot, in the mid-80s, NSSF created the first National Directory of Shooting Ranges. Originally printed as a supplement in Field and Stream magazine, the directory is now among the most popular sites on our webpage. These grassroots promotions were effective, but what was also needed was a new level of excitement to the shooting sports that would gain media attention and help attract a new generation of participants. Launched in 1988, the Sportsman's Team Challenge was the first of its kind multi-discipline event with unique courses of fire, designed to provide the color and action necessary for spectator and TV appeal. This made-for-TV event went on to anchor the first major shooting sports programming on ESPN, NSSF's Chevy Trucks Shooting Sports America, that for 10 years brought the world of shooting into millions of American homes on Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Looking to bring new shooters into our ranks, NSSF's summer biathlon program was designed to appeal to the millions of American ruckers. The program grew to over 100 events in 75 cities across America by the mid-90s and gained extensive media coverage. But the focus on reaching out to new audiences, NSSF established the Women's Shooting Sports Foundation in 1992. Through chapters around the country, WSSF led the way in introducing women to our sports and gaining much popular publicity for shooting. NSSF research in the mid-90s confirmed the need for additional efforts to recruit and retain customers and underscored the importance of gaining active support from all segments of our community. In 1996, NSSF's first shooting sports summit helped energize both industry and sportsmen's groups and led to major new programs such as Step Outside. Thanks to local partners around the nation, Step Outside events brought our sports to more than a million newcomers over the next 10 years. As the nation looked forward to the new century, NSSF looked forward to expanding its core programs it had launched over the past decade. But new and unexpected challenges lay ahead. On October 30th, 1998, the city of New Orleans filed the first lawsuit against the industry seeking to hold firearms manufacturers and sellers financially responsible for the criminal misuse of their product. Soon, 23 more state and municipal lawsuits were filed. On April 20th, 1999, the Columbine school shootings traumatized the nation and raised anxieties about some troubled youths gaining access to firearms. While help came from many corners, it was clear industry had to rally to its own defense. The lawsuits that sought to destroy the industry had an unintended effect. Instead of surrendering, industry stood together, united as never before. The Hunting and Shooting Sports Heritage Fund was formed, 
and leading companies voluntarily contributed millions in support of a coordinated legal defense and legislative and communications efforts. On the litigation front, attorneys from member companies formed the Firearms Litigation Support Committee and worked with defense counsel to defeat these lawsuits at every turn. But defeating individual lawsuits wasn't enough. Entering the political arena for the first time, NSSF launched a major voter education campaign in the 2000 elections and again in 2004. Key electoral victories in these critical years made all the difference. With the NRA leading the charge, the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act was passed in 2005, which prohibited any new lawsuits based on this failed legal theory. NSSF also understood the need to reaffirm the industry's long-standing commitment to safety and responsible distribution. Launched in September 1999, NSSF's Gun Lock and Safety Information Distribution Program was named Project Child Safe by President George W. Bush in 2001. By 2008, Project Child Safe had distributed some 35 million kits in all 50 states through the support of more than $90 million in federal grants. And that same year, in cooperation with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, NSSF kicked off its Don't Lie for the Other Guy program to help prevent illegal straw purchases of firearms from licensed dealers. While challenged on many fronts, NSSF continues to make headway in helping to build the future of our sports. Launched in 2001, the Scholastic Clay Target Program provided young shooters with an ongoing opportunity to develop their shooting skills and get started in competitive shooting. Within a few years, SCTP programs had sprung up in 40 states. Keying in on the need for grassroots efforts to build our base, NSSF's Hunting Heritage Partnership began in 2003 with grants to state wildlife agencies to develop innovative efforts to encourage new and added hunting participation. To date, hunting heritage grants have helped fund participation efforts in more than 30 states. To help remove barriers to getting started, the Foundation, in partnership with the National Wild Turkey Federation and U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance, began its Families of Field program in 2005 that enabled supervised young hunters to obtain apprentice licenses. To date, 30 states have enacted apprentice license programs, attracting more than 400,000 new young hunters over the past five years. To help new shooters get started, NSSF created its first SHOTS program in 2006 in cooperation with local shooting ranges across the country. Today, First Shots hosts more than 150 events each year in 38 states. With the mission to promote, protect, and preserve hunting and the shooting sports, NSSF continues to build on efforts to encourage new participation promote a better understanding of the safe and responsible use of firearms, and actively support industry initiatives on the legislative and regulatory front. Fifty years ago, our industry created the NSSF to help ensure that our sporting traditions would continue to flourish in a changing America. That investment has not only helped support a healthy business climate for our members and helped millions of our customers 
to continue to enjoy their firearm freedoms and great times afield and at the range with families and friends. It has also helped to build an organization ready and able to meet the challenges along the trail for the next 50 years.